afternoon and good afternoon. Welcome to the tent. Welcome here to a sweltering Juma Private Game Reserve in the Sabi Sands where it is sweaty and hot here in the tent. My name is Steve, joined over there by BK, and this is On Safari. Good afternoon, everybody. Good afternoon. Happy Friday, wherever you find yourself in the world at the moment. We hope you're having a wonderful Friday and your week has been splendid. You are joining us here on Safari for the highlight show over the last 24 hours of everything that's gone down on Amakala and Juma. Now, don't forget this is live and interactive. If you have any questions or if you have any comments, we would love to hear from you. So please do send them through on all the appropriate channels, Twitter, uh, YouTube, as well as on the app or the website. Okay, so kicking it off, BK, shall we jump right in? Uh, what a wonderful way, though, to start, though, would be uh, with Eric down in Amakala with what seemed to be a remarkable sighting with elephants. Welcome. We have found our elephant herd. And they've just had a nice drink of water in front of a bush lodge here. And uh, it looks like they're making their way further west. But we are being spoiled here. Some of them are covered in all sorts of mud and bits. But uh, yes, Cooper, you are on TV. Hello. Yeah, she's waving at you, everybody. You wave back. Oh, that's not really much of a wave. That's a... Oh, you cute man. Thank you for that lovely experience. And now we've covered in dust. But that was, wow, pretty cool. Now the whole herd is sort of starting to come up this way, slowly but surely. Some of them are actually still mingling around the water hole though. So it's, it, it's kind of in drips and drabs. Oh, hello, look who this is. Oh, the big boy, Ballara. Good afternoon, big boy. How are you doing? Are you in that mood today? Hey, you are covered in mud. Are you going to feed next to us? No, not accommodating it. Look at this. How cool. Now, they just come from a waterhole. Uh, obviously, that water hole only had water in it and not mud. They wanted mud. And, oh, oh, everybody's running now for the water. You can hear <laughs> Unbelievable. Oh, we've got a very curious youngster that might want to come and have a, a, an investigation on us. The little youngster pushing on a, a little, what is it, a sibling or a cousin there? Rosemary, I'm frothing at the mouth. This is absolutely amazing. I'm so happy. Oh, do it, do it. Oh, he's lying down and all. <laughs> Nowhere else, only in Africa. This is quite a scene. Quite a scene indeed. Now, I don't know 
it seemed like Eric really enjoyed himself there, BK, didn't you think? Oh, sorry about the audio, everybody. It started to rain here in Juma, and the pitter-patter, as you can hear above our heads, is um, the rain that has been causing us to build up enormous amounts of sweat on this pretty humid and sticky afternoon. Now, Sonia Olsen says, good afternoon, all nature freaks. I think she's referring to all of you out there watching the show. <laughs> Don't take offense. I think she's meaning it in a very positive way. Uh, Earth sign, uh, you reckon Eric, with Eric, that, that elephant... I uh, can sense the camera. He knows it's there. These animals are incredibly intelligent. Uh, they know exactly what's going on. And the Amakala elephants, um, they're a very special bunch, aren't they? Um, how wonderful is it for Eric to have spent all that time with them? Um, Morgan and Eric are loving themselves down there. I spent some wonderful time. Thanks, BK. Just moving my bag out of the rain. And here comes the thunder. Can you hear that? love that sound well that is why i'm sweating like i'm sweating because of that humidity um, and well elephants are going to love this weather cools everything down uh, picky good afternoon everyone time for on safari it most certainly is it's actually six minutes past on safari so if you're just joining now everybody you're a few minutes late but you haven't missed much you've just missed a wonderful clip of eric and elephants down in amakala and never too late i would have been tempted to touch that nose well if it wants to touch you you can put your hand like this and if he puts his trunk in your hand why not i wouldn't go and try grab it though but if he decides to or she decides to i've had an elephant come up and touch my face i, I didn't quite know what to do at the time i just sat there and then i had to wipe off all of this what would you call it snot Something like that. <laughs> Elka Ballara saying hi. So cool. Yes, very, very cool. Um, there was an image or a little video the other day of uh, the elephants walking past Eric and Morgan on our non-lab non days. And uh, the elephant trunk is just coming through like that. They, they do it quite regularly because obviously they can smell. Can you imagine what smells are emanating from Morgan and Eric there? No offense, boys, but I mean, to be honest, there must be plenty of things that are coming off of the vehicle that the elephant are very interested by and uh, i'm sure the same goes for us up here in juma bk don't you reckon i mean james is getting on the car soon can you imagine <laughs> lots and lots of smells okay well everybody before we get too carried away um eric had a wonderful morning and i think it was this morning that he had those okay we'll we'll just hang on for a moment before we play the next clip You might be wondering what I've got going on over here. I've got a graph, everybody, and uh, elephants by the water. Okay, now this is a graph that I can probably work with for the next few days, but essentially what this line is over here is the water point, a dam, or a river. Okay, it's also going to work out the biomass, and this is the distance away from the water, 5, 10, 15 kilometers. Okay. And then what we're going to see here is we're going to see grasses and trees. What do you imagine when we're close to the water? What's the grass going to look like? The grass is going to get fed upon. There's going to be a lot of animals hanging around in this area. So grass component is going to be pretty low. And as you go away from water, grass is going to go up. Don't judge my drawings here. It's not going to be 100% accurate. But now what happens when the grass goes up like that? What can you expect? close to water when you get a lot of overgrazing a lot of elephants a lot of lack of fire not much fuel load the trees are going to be quite quite high and as you go away from water they're going to deteriorate does that make sense so as you come close to water you're going to get much more woody dense vegetation in that five kilometer radius as you move away it starts getting semi woody semi open and then as you move further away you get open savanna now the fire intensity, you can imagine, what do we need for fire? We need fuel, we need grass. Look where the grass is at its highest. The fire intensity is highest over there. And at the same time, because the fire is so intense there, it's also reducing the trees. 
Okay, so that's exactly what happens here. So we've got these three different scenarios, 5, 10, 15 kilometers from water. Dense woody vegetation, semi-woody, wooded, open grassland. Okay, so those are the three habitat types that we're going to find. But where on earth do we find water points that are 5, 10, 15? For 15 to be maintained, this is going to have to go 10, 5, water point. Okay, so I'm just detailing some habitats, not the best drawing towards the end there, but I'll be discussing this at length a little bit more as we go on over the next few days. Um, and I think James is not ready yet to get on the car, so we're going to carry on with our next clip, which I believe is Eric in Amakala, who spent some time with some sleepy rhinos. We have got some white rhinos lying down here. They're out of the wind, but they're not away from the from the rain. So they can still get wet. I don't think they mind getting wet. But they don't like the wind. The wind is it's unpleasant and especially being animals who who don't have very, very good eyesight, they depend on their hearing and their sense of smell in order to uh, keep them safe. And uh, if the wind is blowing, that does render their hearing and uh, it, it affects them negatively. They can't hear everything. Uh, they can only hear from one direction. You see, as I'm talking, you see that ear is moving around. And is actually facing us and that's probably because it's picking up my voice but probably about 200 meters maybe less than that in front of them is a the herd of elephants we think we can't see them we can just hear the bushes breaking and uh, 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 trees are being uprooted it could also be another two bulls, three other bulls there. I did hear some audio that suggested that there were babies there because they, you know, babies give off a specific sound when they are trying to suckle and mom moves away or they're wanting to suckle but they're not allowed to. There's a specific noise that they... There's definitely a very specific noise that the white rhino makes uh, when they're begging, when they're upset, when they're excited. Have you heard it before, BK? It's like a, it sounds like a dolphin. It's, a, it's the most ridiculous sound coming from a white rhino. You wouldn't actually expect uh, that sort of sound. I can't mimic it. I'm not going to attempt to try and mimic it, but it is a really, really interesting sound that comes out from the white rhino. But isn't it splendid to be able to spend the time and Darcy Amakala has such wonderful elephant sightings. Okay, well, it sounds like James is in the driver's seat and he's ready to do some checks. So let's go check in with him. Cool. Hello, everybody, and welcome to this end of On Safari. <laughs> We're about to head out. Our plan today is to get off towards the western boundary, see if we can pick up on the tortoise pan male leopard. It is currently spitting rain and threatening to thunder and lightning upon us, but hopefully it won't do that for the rest of the afternoon. We've put the rain roof on. We're hoping for leopards. We're hoping for lions. We're hoping for great things on this Friday afternoon. Thank you very much and a goodbye. Short and sweet, James. Um, welcome back to us, everybody. Where um, we are in the process of also just sorting out a little bit of a of a map of the habitats over here. And uh, I've done this before on the show, but what is 
important to see about this is we got the 5, 10, 15 kilometers from water and essentially the habitats in the 5 kilometer around water is quite woody. It's quite dense. It's quite, it's what we're quite familiar with here in Juma. And here we get impala, waterbuck, buffalo, wildebeest, zebra. The buffalo, wildebeest, zebra, they can move towards the 10 kilometer. They like that more mixed between the semi-woody and the woody. Remember, all these animals have to come a long distance to the water to drink. So as you go further away, you start getting the elephant and the rhino, you start getting even further away, Tesebi, Eland, Rhone, Sable, that 15 kilometer area, but they all have to come here to drink, and then they go back again. But a lot of them will stay, the Impala, Waterbuck and the like will stay, they won't go too far, so they hang out in this zone, and their defense against predators is the what it is, we talk about it all the time. But now, what is occurring around this 5 to 10 kilometer area is your leopard lion hyena territories are essentially encapsulating the river. Five kilometers, maybe seven kilometers from the river, this is where our predators are hanging out. Okay, so the animals that hang out all the way over here in the 15 kilometer area, their defense against predators is to leave their babies there. They're fast, they got horns, they're very aggressive towards lion. They cover the 15 kilometers all the way through to the water, leaving their babies over there. Wow, that was a nice one. And then they go back again. That's their strategy for survival. Buffalo, wildebeest, zebra, and impala all have their own strategies, and they are able to deal with predators nearby. But now, what is this graph telling us? It's telling us that for this system to happen, 5, 10, 15, we need to have a water point here, and the next water point 30 kilometers away. That means 5, 10, 5, zero again. So that is a 30 kilometer area to maintain this habitat. Woody, semi-woody, open. Now what do we know about these four species here, just to name four? They are regarded as rare and endangered antelope. They used to be very commonplace in the Kruger until water was put in. Now we don't get these habitats anymore. They are leaving their babies, going long distance to find water. But essentially, our predators are occurring everywhere because what was five kilometers there, or ten, is now five. What is, is also five. If that, we don't have these three habitats anymore. So the animals that used to hide their babies are not successfully breeding because the predators are all there. So I hope that makes sense um, because there's a lot of water around. And so lots and lots and lots of animals are not doing what they used to do back in the day. Okay, so I hope that makes sense. That's a very nice description of where animals occur. Habitats, fire, density, and placement of water. Darkmane lover, it was great seeing tortoise pan in the last 10 minutes of the drive today. It definitely was. And hold on a moment, because we're probably going to have a clip just about exactly him. Um, TP looked nice and full. He did Mandy, sorry, Mindy Tillapau. Do they get black rhino and Amakala? Well, they've recently introduced them. I'm not sure if that's, that is common knowledge now. It is. They introduced them while I was there in October. Um, I don't know if they're viewing them yet. They're very very slow process of showing them so but they are there they are there um earth sign rhinos must have the weirdest skull ever we don't have any here they got this very long face it's a very strange looking animal that really really is a strange animal when you see a rhino skull without the horn on it you're like what is that it's a very strange looking face i don't know why we don't have one here but there's a lot of places you can see them many of uh, the parks many of uh, the Kruger camps have got a rhino skull or something nearby with the dentition as well dark man lover um did i ever find out what animal tortoise pan ate not a clue i haven't seen him this morning i saw a clip this afternoon of him which you will be seeing shortly um other than that i'm not really sure just checking the time oh we've got plenty of time so i wonder if there's any questions that have come through about my um 
my graph here. I tried to be as succinct as I could, but essentially the Olifans River, which is north of us, probably about 60 k's, and then the Sand River would have been the two rivers together. So this area once upon a time used to be prolific with sable antelope. Um, obviously the seasonal pans, the seasonal streams, the Mawati, those sort of things would have got water in the wet season. But then as the dry season took hold, those areas would dry out and all of the general game who were moving into those bigger areas would move back and congregate around the water. So along a river, along a permit river, Ulifants, Limpopo, Levuvu, those rivers are designed for pressure. And so they get a lot of animal pressure there. And in the wet season and the dry season, there's plenty of animals there. In the wet season, they're able to range further apart. Dry season gets much more concentrated and around the water points. But now, as I said, we've only got these, if that, which has completely removed those three different types of habitat. Ah, we can talk more about this. So, The fire intensity, I think, makes sense. I'm not sure if you're going to hear me because of the rain. It's going to be one of those afternoons, BK. I'm going to have to move my laptop. Let me get my laptop inside. Okay, so what are we going to do in the rain? Well, everybody, we're going to try and not be drowned out by the rain on the roof. But um, it is what it is. We'll... Um, what can we do about it? This is on safari. This is a live show and the moisture is, is coming in. Um, Maureen, how do the animals hide from the storm? They would. Um, they would try and hide from... BK, you okay? It's coming in, eh? Ah! We're okay. We're okay. We'll survive. Just got to uh, make sure that the, the rain doesn't come in. Hello everybody. We're just busy closing everything up as there's a bit of rain you can probably hear. That's what happens when I talk about water points is the rain arrives and uh, then we've got to cover up. Okay, so, excuse me for shouting, I'm not sure if you're hearing me clearly. I'm going to just close another flap. Okay, so I don't know if we're going to be going on game drive straight after this. We're going to have to wait it out for a moment. But um, talking about Tortoise Pan, everyone's keen to know what happened with Tortoise Pan this morning. I don't really know what happened with him. Let's go catch up with James and Tortoise Pan this morning lying down on, I think it was Triple M. Look at the scar on his nose. Hello, TP. He looks quite beaten up, BK. He yeah, looks quite yeah. beaten up. He's had a harder life than you. You don't look nearly as beaten up. He also looks quite hot. Something has slashed his nose. I don't remember his nose looking like that before. Hooray. Now put your ears forward, ears forward, that's a boy. I think he's also been sitting eating something close by here because he's got a fat belly.
For those of you who are new viewers, Tortoise Pan is a male leopard from the very salubrious environs of Londolozi, where there is a pan known as uh, Tortoise Pan, and he was born around there. I can't remember exactly who his mother was. Um, was it a Nottens female, maybe? I'm not sure. I'll figure it out. Anyway, he comes from down there. And now he lives up here, in the north. Ah, yes. James Richard and Shreyas confirming it's not the Nottens female who's his mother, but the Nzanzeni female. Try and say Nzanzeni after you've had a big night out. Well, the rain is coming down in Africa, everybody, and well, there's not really much we can do about it, except maybe frame it. We've closed everything up because the rain was coming in from the sides. Thankfully, we got some zips. Um, Mark 23, you, you hope the rain doesn't affect things this afternoon. <laughs> I, I think it's going to affect things, Mark. It's going to affect things going to affect me even getting to the vehicle. It is so wet out there. Um, picky, as long as you guys stay safe from the thunder and lightning, we most certainly will. When there's thunder and lightning, we can't broadcast. It's just too technically dangerous for us to be out and about in that. Um, but also, we'd have to wait. We'd have to wait for this downpour to stop. There's no point going out in that because it would just be like. <laughs> uh, Lenny need the rain more than the drive we do need the rain um, but I told everybody it was coming I felt it on my body today I was just dripping with the rain today and uh, yeah what can we do so I didn't receive any questions about my lovely graph over here obviously because it's so well understood but the clear point that I wanted to make everybody is that these animals are rare and endangered because we don't have these three distinct habitat types anymore. They do not occur. There might be some places in the Kruger where you might get an inkling of that, but they don't occur anymore. And so animals like the sable that used to be prolific in places like the Sabi Sands, the name Mala Mala means sable antelope in Shanghai. They used to shoot sable there in the 60s for, war, uh, for rations. So that's because the Sand River and then maybe the Timbavati or Olifants River were the closest water points used to have hundreds of sable, thousands through this area because there wasn't natural water in the dry season. Okay, so this is quite a nice idea if you want to really think about how it works is you put it like this because this will explain the tree density and the habitat, the openness, Of looking male leopard. Look at that neck on him. He just looks ready for a fight. This is only the third time that we are seeing him that is known as the Hukumuri male. And he certainly has a lot of character and atmosphere. This is gorgeous. Hukumuri having a drink at one of the little seasonal pans that's filled up after that beautiful rain we had last night. First time seeing Hukumuri, isn't he beautiful? He's got the babies, he's got the baby. Two of the babies made it away. He's got the one baby. 30 meters away from me, folks. You know, for all we say he's a gangster and he's got a face for radio, we only tease. He's actually highly, highly adorable. Isn't he absolutely gorgeous? Compact, powerful, focused. It's not just Hukamuri and elephants approaching. Look, look at this. And now she's headed towards the elephants. Yeah, here comes the male behind us. This is the male lion coming over here. He's got the elephants have huddled up to protect the young ones in the middle, and he's going after that girl. And they are the buffalo going after the lion and the lioness. They're still going after them. Look at that guy charging! Hey! It seems like every... 